if you've made some bad mistakes in your life and you try to delete yourself from your family, friends, and authorities forever, would you even fake your own death? What if to fake your own death, you decide to kill another, your own lookalike, to really seal the deal? Today's case is one of the wildest cases that I've searched so far this year. It is so unusual that we have not covered a case even similar to this. And this happened in Germany, so a lot of the articles were in German. So it took me a quite a long time to translate to really get the exact information. I had to look through various sources. A kind thumbs up, a like, and subscribe would really be appreciated. Because even if it happened in Germany, I think this is something that we can all relate to across the world. It's still an ongoing investigation, so hopefully in the future we will get some updates as well. So there is a 23-year-old woman named Sharaban K. In Europe, I've noticed that a lot of the last names are concealed, only initials are given. Sharaban is an Iraqi descendant, but is a German citizen, and it seems like from what we know, she does come from a still a very strict family. From what I've researched, it seems like there's a lot of restriction in her family. Now, now this could be her background, like being an Iraqi descendant, or maybe something have to do with religion. I'm not sure and I'm not too familiar with the Iraqi people so if you are Iraqi please comment down below what kind of like the family relationship and style is from what we know it seems like Sharaban did have a very very uptight heavily involved in her every step of her life unlike kind of like American cultures where literally 18 you're free to go do whatever you want Sharaban was also known to be a beauty blogger especially active on Instagram but it seems like she did post things related to clothing makeup makeup and hair. It is also known that she is married but separated from her husband. And this is going to be important information in today's story. But to me, being married and separated at only 23 years old seems to be very young. Now sometime in August of 2022, she would tell her family that she was going to go meet her ex-husband to talk. But she would not return for a while, which was not like Sharaban and her family started to get really worried. Her family went out to search for Sharaban and eventually they did find her Mercedes car and it was found near the Danube River in a street. When they opened the doors to the car in the back seat, they found what appeared to be their daughter Sharaban completely mutilated in the face and of course deceased. Her condition was so bad that they couldn't recognize her in the face because she was stabbed multiple times. But because of her hair, the body, they thought that this was obviously her. The police was called and the body was taken to do an autopsy to see exactly what happened and who might have done this to their own daughter. Their family was obviously devastated, never having to imagine your 23-year-old daughter go through something like this. And again, remember, she said she was going to go meet her ex-husband. So the family was like, hmm... We know who to point fingers to. Although the family were sure, I guess in Germany or in homicide cases these days, they did a DNA test on the body just to make sure, you know. Just 24 hours since the DNA test and the family had been preparing for a funeral, they got a call of a shocking news. The news that would shake Germany. The woman that was found was not Sharabin, their daughter, but another woman named Khadija O. Khadija was 24 years old. She was a woman that lived about 100 miles away from where they lived. Now she was mysteriously murdered and ended up in someone else's car that was mistaken for Sharaban. Shortly after Sharaban was found alive and her and her accomplice Shakir was found and arrested. So WTF happened here? It turns out that this was all part of a sick plan. An unheard of plan till this day that the two would come up with, all to fake her own death to run away from her life problems. So what happened here was that police found out that Sharaban actually made multiple fake decoy Instagram accounts and started to reach out to multiple different women around Germany, especially around where she was living. It seemed like she was looking for someone that looked very similar to herself, a doppelganger. Someone with the same skin tone, same type of hair, body type, height. And actually multiple girls that she reached out to responded back. And one of the girls that responded and she reached out to was a girl named Khadija. 
Khadija was another Instagram beauty blogger, and police say she was also very active on Instagram. And I did find her TikTok account, and you could see she was so beautiful. She was only 24 years old, also a very close, similar age to Sharaban. So the first plan that Sharaban did was that she reached out to multiple girls, claimed that she was a manager of a famous rapper in Germany, and that they were recruiting models for her music video. It is actually very common for managers, artists. Is to link up with different people, to hire people, and DM them on Instagram. So this seemed not too unusual for especially the MZ generation. And this is the rapper that the alleged manager said they were recruiting for. Her name is Loon. She seems to be very popular in Germany. She apparently has millions of followers on Spotify, and she's also a Iraqi descent singer. So Khadija seemed to be very interested. She was like, "Oh my god!" But Khadija did feel like something was iffy and off. So Khadija would actually. Send a DM to Loon, the singer, saying, "Quote: I hope you see it and can answer me because I'm very, very insecure." A woman texted me about shooting a video, supposedly of you. And I don't know. I'm not sure if it's fake. She thinks that's also in an Offenburg and everything. Not that I drive there and then something happens. Would be super cool if you tell me if this is real or fake. Loon, the singer, replied saying, "It's fake, sister. Don't answer." So obviously Khadija knew that this was a scam and she ignored it. But Sharaban did not give up. The next thing Sharaban would do was that she made up that there was some kind of a contest, some kind of beauty contest in a salon that she was operating in, and she was gonna get free treatments and. Free products, and she did this like giveaway contest, and again reached out to Khadija. Now later we will find out the address of this hair salon was actually Sharaban's ex-husband's real hair salon. Now this plan, this trap, seemed to work, and Khadija would end up agreeing to meet up with Sharaban for this beauty treatment or contest winning. Khadija actually lived about hundred miles away from Sharaban, and Sharaban said that she would even go pick up Khadija. From her hometown, all the way miles and miles away, and I guess Khadija really saw the kind heart in people and thought that she was really going to be a model and get free treatments. Again, it's very common for influencers and celebrities to get these kind of DMs to be models for people. I get them a lot, you know, a lot of emails, and of course, thank God I have a manager who knows how to double check these things.、Um, but sometimes, like if it's like a small business or a smaller influencer, like offering free services, you don't know, especially. If you're just starting out as an influencer, she was only 24, so they would set up a date and a time to meet up, which was shortly before sometime August 16th. And it's quite sad, but Khadija's TikTok accounts and what she uploaded stops at around early August. And this would be her last video. And I just thought that it was eerie, I guess, that she uploaded a video shortly before her passing. And this video says like something she wants to do before she goes. So I believe the three, so Sharaban, Khadija, and the man that Sharaban hired, Shakir, they would meet up. Pick her up and actually did something like gave her free items, I believe. And it was on the return trip back to the hometown of Khadija. She was lured out of the vehicle in a wooden area, and Shakir would stab her over fifty times in the face. Khadija's body then would be found in a Mercedes coupe on August sixteenth. Again, the car that belonged to Sharaban. Now it's absolutely clear on the intent that they decided to target the face, so that the family would not recognize this person. That they would think that just by seeing the hair, the skin tone, the body frame that was close to their daughter, that they would just believe that this was really horror. Because even police who found her actually say that they were baffled because they were so similar. That she really picked someone that you would call a doppelganger. I just cannot wrap my head around it, you guys. Just because they were beauty bloggers, and to have this done to the victim's face is just—it's really shocking and angered a lot of people. I mean, if this happened to me, would my family or my friends or people that's been living with me and know me my whole life really not even recognize my body? But then I thought, well, I'm sure the family would really not want to look at the body, especially if your loved one's face is completely gone and bloody and in that position like that. I don't think you would. 
would want to look at the body precisely, I guess. And I think that's why everybody was kind of fooled in the beginning because they were like, oh, that's her. You know, I don't want to look, I don't want to see my loved ones in that position, you know? So I think it was a quick check more than like a thorough thing. Now, the man who did this, Shakir, was believed to have been paid about 80,000 euros for the job. Some say that this was like her boyfriend. Some says that it was just someone paid, her friend. There's also reports that Sharaban actually had a new boyfriend. So I think there's like a lot of men problems here, honestly, as well. Here's a photo of Shakir's apartment, which the police had to blow up the door to arrest him. And here's a photo of Sharaban in a pizza store before her arrest. You know, like casually ordering pizza when you're supposed to be dead. When Sharaban was arrested and found, police stated that she did this because she wanted to fake her own death to run away from her internal family dispute. Apparently, at this time, she was in a relationship with another man that the family did not approve of. So it seems like she came from a very conservative and a traditional family household. Maybe it was that bad enough where she really wanted to run away from her family. Like she just could not deal with them anymore. And maybe like the family is so, it's so bad that they threatened her that if she ran away, they would find her. I don't know. It's not revealed to the exact of how their family style is. I guess like the only way out she thought was to unalive herself. I'm not sure if this boyfriend of hers knew the plan and they were both deciding to run away. But I mean, she obviously was also pretty wealthy and well off to have a Mercedes car to pay 80,000 euros. That's a lot of money. Another thing, police believe that she tried to frame her ex-husband as a killer to her own murder. Also, hence the reason why she told her family before she left that she was gonna go see her ex-husband and talk to him. So it wasn't just the innocent victim, Khadija. It was even her ex-husband she was trying to frame to, to put him in jail. The two suspects are arrested. They're in custody and they're still awaiting trial. If found guilty, they do face life in prison. The crazy thing is Khadija, the victim here, she was not in any way affiliated with these people. They were just strangers. Sharaban didn't know this girl. Like they weren't friends, ex-enemies or anything like that. She literally lured and trapped innocent victim that she found online that resembled her. I think that's even more crazy because if you found someone that looked like you, like a doppelganger, I would have even more empathy for that person being like, oh my god, we look alike. Maybe we can be best friends. But to some people, I guess they plan sick stuff like this. Another question is if DNA testing was not done, like the family or whatever, the law said that you don't have to do DNA tests, what would have happened? What if still to this day, they believed that Sherabin was dead and maybe what if her body was cremated? I mean, this case would have never been discovered or solved. And the ex-husband really would be blamed for it and he would have to go to trial. And who knows, maybe even without evidence, there's cases where without complete evidence, sometimes you're convicted. And at the end, did Sharapin really think she was gonna get away with this? Especially today, we have a lot of cameras, a lot of forensic technology that you can use. Did she not think that there was gonna be any DNA testing done or fingerprinting? Where does she even get 80,000 euros Maybe, I mean, is it her like now boyfriend that gave her the money or was she saving this money up? Maybe her family's like really wealthy and well off. We don't know. I just want to emphasize that it is so easy to meet people. These days you can buy followers, you guys. You could buy likes. You can post anything that you want. You can post any photos and pretend that to be you. Because this case is so unusual, I think one thing that we can spread and tell other people is just to be, be careful of who DMs you, someone that you don't know. Always double check and do extensive background research especially if you're meeting up with an online person. Remember, this case is still an ongoing trial. We'll see and I'll let you guys know if there are any updates. I really wish Khadija will get the justice that she deserves. Let me know what you guys have thought about today's story. Leave a comment down below. Share this video with friends. See you guys in my next video.